Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're starting a new chapter on sinusoidal voltages and currents in circuits, and we're also going to talk about phasers. So what do we mean by a sinusoidal voltage? Well, it's what we call an alternating voltage. It alternates over time, and you can see if you look at the graph that sometimes the voltage will be positive in one direction, and then it will be positive in the other direction. So here we have a simple diagram with a single voltage source and resistance, and yes, we do show that we have the positive end of the source right here and the negative end of the source there. But if the voltage is alternating, that means that in every cycle, half the time the voltage will be positive in one direction and half the time the voltage will be positive in the other direction. And so the current will then be alternating, going back and forth, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and we'll see a lot more about that. But in the meanwhile, what we want to do is look at the concept of what we mean by a sinusoidal voltage. Well, the equation for the voltage can be expressed as the maximum voltage, V max, times either the sine or the cosine of omega t plus potentially a phase angle if there's phase angle. And we'll explain a lot more about what phase angles are. So we look at this and we realize that V max is the maximum amplitude of the voltage as it alternates between a positive and negative direction and from a maximum value to zero to negative maximum value and so forth. Sometimes we call the, the voltage from the top peak to the bottom peak the peak to peak voltage that would be twice the maximum voltage from zero to the max. We call omega well, the angular frequency. We also have what we call the frequency and so what's the difference? The difference between those two is two pi. You can see that omega would then be 2 pi times the frequency. So if we have a 60 hertz voltage or a 60 hertz current, that means it alternates 60 times per second. But then with omega, omega would be 2 pi times 60, and that's then called the angular frequency. We also have a phase angle, which means that at time equals zero, the voltage could be shifted either to the left or to the right. Graphically, if this is a positive quantity, if we add a phase angle, where we go like this, if we add a phase angle plus, plus phi, then it takes the, the graph and it shifts to the left. If it's a negative, it shifts it to the right. It just means if it shifts to the left, you get to that value sooner. So notice here that instead of having to go from here to there in time, now you have to go a shorter period, so you get to the maximum voltage quicker when it shifted, when the graph is shifted to the left, when you add a phase angle. And finally, we talk about the period of the oscillation. Notice that if we start over here and we do one complete cycle from there to there, that's called the period. Now, if we graph it on a voltage versus time graph, then this distance would indeed be called the period because the period would be in seconds. That means time. And omega t, which is typically the argument of our sinusoidal voltage, where you multiply the angle of frequency times the time together, Notice then the units here are in terms of pi, pi and 2 pi. So 2 pi would be a complete oscillation when we have omega t as the argument in our equation. So again, notice that we can use both the sine and the, and the cosine. It really makes no difference. It actually just simply means that when t equals 0, we start at a different point. This would be the sine function, and here this would be the cosine function. Notice we have the same amplitude, the same period, the same everything, except we just start at a different point on the graph when time is equal to zero. So here this would be a sine function, a cosine function over there, and it makes no difference whatsoever which one you use. Typically we use the one that's appropriate if we're given a particular starting point. So that's the basic concept of an alternating voltage source. And of course, if we have an alternating voltage source, we have an alternating current to the circuit. Even though we mark it as plus and minus on the graph, and we'll show that a little bit later, we do realize that the current will go in both directions on every cycle, and so the voltage would be plus and minus through every cycle as well. So the basic concepts of alternating voltage, and as you can see in the title, we we'll also will be talking about phasers further down the line as we do some more videos on the basic concept of this. That's how it's done.